Hello. Hello. What is cracking? Can you read me? I do. Okay, you're good. Do you read Ooh. me? Oh yeah, loud and clear. I got jump scared by the, the call noise. Call me call? Yeah, I know. I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> that loud. <laughs> it it gets scary sometimes, I know. I know, just this newfangled technology and who's what's it's in discourse. Yeah. Yep. All right, there we go. Got your PNG on the stream. <laughs> I looked over and I just seen my eyes peeking up over the frame. Oh, is it set to this? Uh, oh, wait, you're not even on Parsec. Get on Parsec. Get on that Parsec. Yeah, parsec. <laughs> there we go. I'm, should I hit connect right now? Connecto. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. yeah. Mm. You're listening to the sweet sounds of Virtua Fighter. I know it. I know it's hitting right now. That's for sure. Uh, if you if you could see what? my head bobbing. Oh, your head bopping? Yeah. If only you could see my head bopping. We could uh, figure out a solution to that, but I don't think I want to do it tonight. <laughs> Nah, this is way easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for helping me come out, come out of my shell and stream this week, because I've I've just been feeling kind of blah about it. But uh, it's always good to to chill with a friend. Yeah, I was gonna ask, uh, how are things? Doing okay. Job is kind of weird. Not exactly what I expected. Uh, hmm. but I might have opportunity to expand upon the role. Ooh. I like the sound our of that. team our team is gonna be uh is gonna be um presenting for faculty at a museum at like a faculty Ooh. retreat so I'm, mm. I wrote a, a little speech just outlining my goals and basically making sure they know I I exist and what services <laughs> I can offer so yeah that's always good. That's always good to yeah. uh, <clears throat> expand your horizons and such. Yeah, because the main thing I really want to do is is work with instructors and help them adapt their teaching style to, uh, you know, video demonstrations and lectures and things like that. So, uh, I just haven't had a chance to to really collaborate or get in front of people, and you know, it's almost going on to be my third month, and now. Uh, you know, I'm getting a, a small opportunity to do so. Hell yeah. That's good. I've, uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just this time of year, but I've noticed a lot of people seeming to either have, like, either came back to this game or, like, getting good opportunities elsewhere, and it, it makes me happy to see. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been, it's been a weird balance having a full-time job and also wanting to keep active socially and just hobby-wise. Oh yeah, I don't want to, always... I don't want to drain myself, so. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I understand. I, I'm sure, uh, you know that, um... Like all last month was basically just like a cool down month for me. Like I wasn't trying to do anything too, too involved or too like big. Like I, I didn't collab with anybody last month and um, mm -hmm. most of my streams were basically the same. Like just a lot of Blender and a lot of, mostly Blender. <laughs> yeah. Noticing in, in Discord that, uh... My green bubble is not going away. Are you hearing like an echo? Um, I don't think so. Welcome in, Princess Tofu, to the Digital Dojo. Here I am with my friend Khan. 
They, they won't uh, challenge you, meditate, and cooperate on space. I almost said, almost said Space Channel 5. That'd be a lot of fun. Space, space Channel, Channel 5, 5, dude. Oh, mm. yeah. Space Never Quest 5, the next mutation. Um, so, uh, enjoy. I hope you're having a good night. Yep, yeah, Tofu's class act. Alright. But yeah, how how close are we to finishing this game? I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> I know last time we uh, fought off some barfy aliens who made fart noises at us with their guns. Oh yeah, I remember that. And, I remember pants uh, falling then down. We, then we put... Uh, Ew, Balji, thank you for the raid. Balji. I'm uh, just doing a recap of uh, what happened last time on Space at Space Channel 5 again. I must really want to play Space Channel 5. <laughs> Have you ever played it? No, but I actually know what it is. Isn't it like like a rhythm game? Yeah, you're a you're a a, a news reporter in space. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're, uh, you're combating the alien forces with your sick dance moves. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it was. That sounds yeah, like a good time, though. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have the just Japanese copy because uh, the cover is just awesome because it's like a foil cover, so it's really shiny and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the future. It's got to be Chrome. Yeah, I'm just saying. We, you know, <laughs> classic Japan always getting the good stuff. You know, I got I was lucky enough to get an import copy. Uh, yeah, a few months ago. That's true. Oh. So teal. Yo. <laughs> uh, am I the only person that pronounces it wrong? Well, I don't know. You just you owe me a lot of yeehaws. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw. Uh -oh. <laughs> we have a hydrate, and actually, need I just that. I literally just drank it. But you know, I gotta I gotta get more water. Yeah, I, before we start. I've been slacking, so I need some. Yo, me too. No, but we, uh, it's, it's been weird because uh, my office actually got flooded. We're on the basement of the library, basically, garden level. It's a really oh. old building on the university. And uh, it rained really, really hard one day. And us Californians are just not prepared, of course, mm. for heavy, heavy rain. And so it just came flooding in. That whole level got... So we're all working from home right now. Usually we're working from home twice a week. But... um. Yeah, I've also so that kind of also, you know, warrants a disconnect. Uh, yeah, that, that you know, sucks. With my work environment and films like that. But you know, in general, I feel like I'm in this role and nobody knows what to do with me. I mm. I certainly have a vision for it, but uh, you know, as for like you know navigating the space to get yeah. to that point, you know, I'm a total newbie. So. Yeah, it's it sounds like it's a. You said you've been there how long? Uh, three months. Yeah. Yeah. Usually that's around the time where uh, you kind of start to feel like your way, like where you are in a job, like whether or not mm -hmm. you like it and would like to stick out uh, your your remaining time there. So. I mean, from what it sounds like, it sounds like you're kind of on the fence. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking for other opportunities to, you know, I'm always keeping my options open, to be honest. But I don't really know what else I would do right now. I mean, I'm thinking about going back to school, maybe. But mm. I just, I, my interests are changing, honestly. Uh, I just feel like I'm not as invested in in a lot of things that I used to be. Yeah. And you know, maybe that's that's where the lack of streaming comes from too. And um yeah, 
Like, I just, I don't watch as many movies as I used to. I just don't give a shit. I think media is just so oversaturated. And... <laughs> just, I, I don't know how to communicate really well. Uh, <laughs> with, like, you know, just, just, I don't know. I just feel like I'm, I'm behind or slow in some way. And I... Yeah. Well... I don't know. I, I think that might just be, uh work having to uh, have a full-time job kind of does that to you a lot i mean i feel like that i felt like that for like, the past few months it's only like until recently when i started to uh get back into some of the stuff that i used to uh like enjoy and actually have, mm -hmm. have the energy to do anything outside of work other than like laze around and sleep i'm, yeah. I'm not sure what exactly changed but I don't know. It it just kind of ebbs and flows, especially like right. Yeah. What, what kind of jobs that we have that are mostly like technology based, from what I can tell. Yeah. It's it's really it can be draining. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm I'm on a I'm on the ebb rather than the flow right now, but uh, yeah, you know, I got my priorities in check. And just make sure that I'm I'm doing enough for me. Personally. Yep. Yeah. You gotta make sure you're you gotta handle your business, as they say. You gotta make sure like bills is paid, expenses paid, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean sure the other thing is that I'm you. I'm living with my parents and I'm grateful, you know. Uh yeah. So and you know yeah. even though i didn't have a lot of money after my european trip i mean i did have cash but i i mean it's just like i'm i'm getting money and i'm still like not spending it i'm still like in the mentality of like eh, i gotta save that stuff i mean that's, that's good like even on like... little things even on little things like i want to be able to invest in myself you know i don't want to be mm. like super super frugal to the point where it's like you know Cause like I have opportunities I could do and, and go out by myself and, and do stuff, but I just mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time putting my finger on what it is exactly that I want to do. And I think just like coming out of the pandemic, these past you know years has been yeah. really weird because it's been it's been the search for you know what's next and now next has come. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> okay, well now what? <laughs> Well, I think that's just, I think everybody's trying to find their footing in, like, in the, this crazy world that we got going on right now. I mean, yeah, shit yeah. is still wild. Like, the economy is uh, kind of rough. Shit's popping off overseas. I ain't going to get into it too much. But, yeah, everybody's just trying to make sense of everything. So, yeah, I think yeah. we're all in that kind of, like, ebb period that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, maybe this is a start. This is a good gateway for me to kind of get back in touch with myself. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it's always nice to have friends. Always nice to spend time with friends. Yeah, and I'm looking for new connections always. Seeing how those go. So. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to be right back because I'm going to go fill up my Wawa. Ooh. I mean, I got to entertain the people. You, you can, or you can just jam to the music. <laughs> yeah, I, I can. I can do both. All right. I will jam and entertain. Right. BRB. Hey. Well, hello there, chat. How are you doing tonight? Y'all doing good out there? It's me. Zarkon coming to you live from the digital dojo this is starting to sound like a, a wrestling promo but it's not not yet that's that's not the point of tonight's program it's going to be the opposite of wrestling we're going to be fumbling around and not i'm not good at these kinds of games point click adventures sati was probably going to bail me out whenever shit gets real thick <laughs> 
wrestling. That's right. Hello, Jim D. How would you do it tonight? Satio stepped away for a moment to get some, to get some Wawa. So I'm just here, uh, being an old man, yo's a cloud. Talking about how I'm out of my element with these kinds of games. But yeah, I hope you're doing good tonight. Do you, do, do you like wrestling? Are, are, you, are you a fan? Ooh, welcome back. Got more Wawa. Yep, I was just talking. I was talking about wrestling, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's hard to stop. What is what is up in the wrestling world? A lot of drama, seems like. <laughs> I mean, isn't that always? Well. I want to say real life drama, but it's, I, I think work drama would be more apt. Because uh, a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of factions are changing, and a lot of people are leaving one company, going to other companies, and there's bad blood as to uh, why these changes are happening and people are leaving. Yeah, it's, it's usually like nasty. a financial thing. Yeah. But also, like, integrity. Yep, yep. That's 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 a big one. What's going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> Integrity and like respecting one another. I don't know, it's a different kind of world when you step into wrestling politics. I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that's just... showbiz. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what it feels like. It feels like a fucking circus right now. So, you ever see a uh, uh, night in the city? Night in the city. Is that a stage play or is that a movie? It is a it is a film, the old noir film. Uh, it takes place in London, and it's about this guy who's basically like a con artist, and he <laughs> is he's trying to. Uh, he, he kind of run in, runs into a good opportunity to uh, uh, build a, a wrestling promotion. Ooh. Like a traditional Greco-Roman wrestling promotion. Yeah. And it kind of a, just all goes to shit. <laughs> pretty fascinating. Pretty, pretty like interesting it. character studies. Yeah, it sounds like it. How old is this movie? 1950. Wow. Come on, microphone. You can do better than that. Yeah, I've been having that's, trouble with my microphone really lately. Film. But yeah. I, I might have I to look into that. It. Might have to look into that. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I think it's a really cool film. Um, I, I was Like, when I first watched it in undergrad, I, I couldn't stop. I had to find it again after seeing it in class. It's just one of those things that sticks with you. And I think it's it's honestly I think it's probably my favorite film noir. So. Yeah. It's a really strange mix of genres, I gotta say. Like if you got you got film noir. It's called uh the title references Knights. And then you also have Greco Roman wrestling. And you have things going to shit. It just sounds like yeah. a good recipe for <laughs> a narrative. Yeah, it's it's really it's yeah. I don't have the words right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how that is. I'm the same way. Uh. But yeah, I mean. Personally, I guess, I've, I've just been kind of spending my time... I picked up Gulliver's Travels, I started reading it, and... Gulliver's Travels. Yeah. And it's really funny, because, like, there's bits in it where it's like, dude, how do you shit in this small country <laughs> when you're this big? <laughs> he literally talks about that, and it just is just really funny. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. put it past Jonathan Swift, because he is a, a satirist, as... I'm sure you know you're the one of them history buffs. Yeah. Isn't it wasn't there a movie 
about Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels. Travels. I think there was a movie with Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one I was thinking about. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, um, and I heard somewhere that the Gulliver's Travels book is like way more vulgar than the movie was because the movie was supposed to be like a kid's movie. Mm -hmm. But like in Gulliver's Travels, like there's a part he meets like giant women and like they start shoving him in different like crevasses and <laughs> I guess you know, I'll like, find out <laughs> oh shit <laughs> my bad <laughs> my bad I didn't know how oh, far you, how long you were not far at all but it's just oh, I just yeah. think it's it's comical but it's terrifying because he's like in such a weird situation he's trying to be diplomatic to these small people and he re it really gets into the nuances of that yeah it's, it's interesting a, I actually have no idea what the plot is for that movie. Like, what is the basis? He's an explorer, and he gets shipwrecked, and he ends up in a small-sized country, and he is the only normal-sized person. Hmm. At least that's how it starts. And, like, uh, they detain him because he's just like, we can't have you running around uh, recklessly. <laughs> and he's like, I respect that. I'm just gonna stay still and let you like transport me <laughs> around because I don't want to fuck up your country. So it's interesting. Like he he gets like a little rapport, but he's he wants to he wishes for like you know uh, his uh, autonomy, of course. But they they have to kind of figure it out together. On top of that, he's like learning this new language of these really tiny people. So. Yeah, because I was going to ask, I was like, how are they going to detain him? And he's like a giant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think just like a lot of people, I picked up Bellatro on the Switch, which is like that deck building poker game. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, it's addicting. And then, uh, I don't know, I'm, in, I'm following Vine Sauce's uh, playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, the new one. Oh, Just the, to, uh... to see, because I, I like the original. I've been thinking about playing the original as well, but I also feel like I need to move onwards and upwards and like play new things. So, <laughs> <laughs> like new, new experiences. So. Nah. <laughs> nah I'm, it's funny because I've been seeing like uh, I don't know if you've seen that article floating around but it's like uh, why are why is the younger generation going back to retro games and, yeah you know, I saw a headline article. like that on social media yeah it's like a mainstream article and everybody uh, who is not the mainstream media like gets it immediately because they're like yeah, yeah older games are just they're good <laughs> they're well crafted they're well crafted products um, yeah, they're, they're finished products <laughs> yeah and you know I mean it's just like you know I don't know if you compare like a a cell phone camera to like an, a mechanical camera one of them is just always going to work and it's the, going to be the mechanical camera because so much love was put into that product as a finished product, right? So. Yeah, and being mechanical kind of helps too. Yeah. I just, I feel like um, game design has definitely changed. But what I really mean is that, for me, new experience means just something I've never interacted with. Uh, or uh, haven't finished. So, I mean, there's tons of those. I have tons of unfinished business with games I've streamed, oh, yeah. and, you know, I may move on from them, but, um, I just feel like I, I know Final Fantasy VII so well, I'm also considering playing more Chrono Trigger, uh, mm. because, I mean, I've, I've just, I've played that so many times, though, and so, when, uh, Akira Toriyama passed, I decided to check out Dr. Slump, the PS1 game is based yeah. on a really 
funny manga of his. I, I love Dr. Slump. I don't know if you've ever read Dr. Slump. Nah, I never heard of Dr. Slump until uh, Toriyama Gosh. passed away. Yeah, it's really, it's, I think you would like it. It's really absurd. Uh, <laughs> I think, I Are think you? that's, that's pure Toriyama genius. And I haven't, uh, read it in a long time, but I also picked up the anime. So I might start watching that. But it's just, it's just so funny, nonsensical, non sequitur stuff. Mm. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> deep, deep, deeply Japanese flavor. Ooh, I like that. I like the sound of that. But yeah, um, what have I been doing recently? I, I'm, I've started re-entering my tinkering phase once again. Um, I don't know if I've told you this before. I might have, but. A uh, long time ago, back in the olden days, probably like, damn, like five, six years ago, I used to tinker and fix uh, Game Boys. And like, well, I fixed one, one Nintendo DS and I'm never fucking doing that again because they're so fucking complicated. So it was mostly Game Boys. <laughs> and, uh, Recently, I was going through some stuff because I was like, I got too much shit and I don't even use like most of it. So like, why not? Uh, why not sell some of it? You know, let it go to somebody who is going to use it. And I found some of my old stuff to my old unfinished projects. And I'm like, well, I guess if I'm going to end up selling some of this stuff, I better go ahead and finish some of these projects. <laughs> And it ended up leading to more projects and more stuff that I had to acquire in order to finish these projects. And I'm pretty sure I ended up with more stuff than I had uh, originally now. <laughs> so I've, <laughs> I've achieved the, the opposite of what my goal was. But it's been fun. It's been fun tearing these things apart and like putting them back together and get the solder and iron out and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I want to learn some of this stuff too because I have consoles and stuff that I want to like add soft mods to and uh, other things. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say like give it a try. Start out with like... Well, for me, like at this point, uh, working on like a Game Boy Advance SP is like, I got that shit down pat. It is like, <laughs> so, it is so easy at this point. On the other side though, <laughs> I'm, I am never, I'm never reshelling a Nintendo DS Lite ever again. <laughs> well, I think the, is, the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy modding is really popular. It always has been. So yeah. I feel like that's just a good thing to do is yeah get an old game there's so many of them you know you can definitely like do custom services for for people um, oh yeah and reliably you know so. yeah i have uh i have three game boy advance sps all of them have uh custom shells on them that i swapped them out for and uh <laughs> I was planning on just keeping one, but during this whole time, like going through them and like testing them out, making sure they still function and shit. I'm kind of like, man, I don't know if I want to let go of them. <laughs> yeah, but it's and cool like, to give it. like, it's cool to give stuff new life and uh, yeah. give it a new, you know, just, just it, it's cool that we as hobbyists can keep stuff going for as long as we oh, want yeah. to mm -hmm. there's always going to be an interest yeah absolutely yeah. and Good. there's always going to be an alternate solution someone comes up with to to help keep that stuff going um, oh yeah i don't know about the ps3 but <laughs> <laughs> I've, I uh, everything mean, else i think <laughs> well i think everything else is possible it's it's possible 
because I've been seeing so much bad stuff about the PS3. They're like, first there was like the the fucking the CMOS bomb thing. I thought that got fixed, but apparently it hasn't. Question mark. And now there's like some other shit that's going on. I seen a video about it the other day where it was like, oh god, what was it? It was something really intricate that you would have to like fucking do one of those what is that bga adjustments to which is uh ball grid something essentially it's for like microchips um some microchips are soldered directly to boards using like a, a grid of small balls of solder on the bottom which is like damn near impossible for humans to do so i don't even know you would have to be like a really in-depth hobbyist to <laughs> do some shit like that you'd have to have like a like a professional like hot air station or like uh one of those hot plate things that they use for soldering you need some in-depth shit to keep one of those going mm -hmm. and i'm like bro why sony why <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds like a lot of precision tools involved yeah anything that Anything that in depth is not my forte. I mean, hell, sometimes solder and shit is a, a pain in the ass. Yeah, it's like definitely a, a skill, right? Yeah, you don't realize how small some things can be until like you see it. <laughs> yeah. Bulgy, I thought you were going to bed. Uh, I forgot to say earlier. Yeah, cool. God. <laughs> uh yes i've also been finishing up uh a hat in time because i got it a long time ago on the, on the switch mm. and that's it's a really fun 3d platformer indie game <clears throat> and then there's that new one penny's penny's big breakaway which i, I want to check out too that looks like a lot yeah i have uh <laughs> i mostly just been playing Tetris. Yeah. That's like me with Dr. Mario. That's like just a given. Just in my off time, I'll, I'll play Dr. Mario. or Actually, the I mean, one thing I've been doing is, is playing Mario Tennis on the Game Boy. Uh, that's a lot of fun. I love Mario yeah. Tennis. Obviously, I love tennis in general. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I remember you saying that one time before. That you actually played tennis. Yeah. And I, I have a class usually on Saturdays, but it's been rained out so many times. I need to see if we're going to do like any makeup classes or anything, but Oof, I, I, have, man. I have my doubts. <laughs> yeah, you must be like, you must be in some good ass shape then. I know tennis is like a, it's a hell of a workout. Really fun. I, I love the cardio. Uh, it's like my main form of exercise, really. Besides sometimes I like stretch during the week, but... I, uh, yeah. I don't know. I find working out just, I'm not drawn to the repetitiveness of it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But I know it's important. I know it's important to keep your body in shape. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm kind of a, uh, or I was getting to be like, kind of, <laughs> excuse me. I was kind of getting to be like a, a bit of a workout junkie. Because, uh, like, just after the start of the new year, I, I bought some uh, some dumbbells because I wanted to finally start lifting weights. And, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure part of my issue last month was that, like, I, I think I, sh I strained a muscle, like, in my neck. Mm -hmm. And, like, I could feel it all the way up through my head. It was, like, started off, like, in the base of my shoulder and went all the way up kind of like circling on the left side of my head all the way towards the front like until it was right above my eye and I was like I was freaking out to start with I was like what the hell is going on here and then I noticed it one night I, I did a rip and I felt that whole area just like tense up and I was like mm, that's probably what it was yeah so yeah yeah it's a uh, cousin con finally managed to uh, convince me to uh, <laughs> you know tone it down just a little bit 
maybe not do it every day, just do it like every other day. Cause he was like, rest periods are important. And I was like, fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't wanna, you know, one thing to, you know, work out consistently, but it's another thing to like, you know, totally strain yourself out and actually cause some physical damage if you don't uh, rest correctly. So. Yeah. And uh, apparently, well, according to him, he he knows the gym better than I do. He's done it for way longer. Mm -hmm. Apparently, according to him, he says a rest period is... Because uh, I told him one of the issues was I felt like I was missing out on gains. And he was like, actually, it's not. He, he said, whenever you give muscles a rest period, it gives them time to uh, repair themselves. And that actually helps with uh, muscle development. And I was like, well, if you say so. <laughs> that's the miracle of the human body, I guess. Yep, that's, that's uh, millions of years of evolution <laughs> taking place. Cells uh... at work. Yeah, the, the gym, I was a guest at my buddy's gym, actually Mauricio who comes on and reads with us, but Fudge Superior, uh, mm -hmm. he canceled that membership though because they kind of screwed him over. So I think we maybe we need to look for another gym, but what we would do is, because they had racquetball there, uh, we yeah. would do like a half hour workout and then we would get into the racquetball room. I think that's a fun way to do it too. Um, yeah. Or like do a, a small workout and then get into the pool and do some laps. So mm. I like mixing it up like that. Can't just like yeah. do workout and like you know not have a. I don't know. Workout is not fun to me. It's like what I'm gonna <laughs> reward myself with you know a game or a you know something. Yeah. I mean, workouts do kind of feel like work. Mm -hmm. I know um, something something about working out. Is I kind of look at it kind of like a uh, a pound of flesh, you know, my daily pound of flesh, or like my every other day pound of flesh, is uh, lifting weights and uh, you know, kind of getting tired, getting sweaty, because. Uh, Way back in the day when I used to work outdoors, I would, I would be fucking exhausted by the time I got home, because I would, on average, walk like 15 miles a day and move heavy shit all day. And while that does feel like work, I do feel like whenever you, like, apply your body to something, and you can actually see like, you can see the effects of it. You can see the. Yeah. The consequences of your actions. Well, consequences sounds bad, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, cause and effect. Yeah, the cause and effect of the whole thing. If you can see the effect in front of your eyes, it kind of it makes it feel a little bit more worthwhile. Yeah. And, uh, I'm the kind of person that thinks like you shouldn't ever be too comfortable. Like you shouldn't have pleasure all the time. Like you need a little bit of a uh, you need a little bit of dirt in your mm -hmm. day in order to, to stay balanced. And that's why I I do my calisthenics and I go for a run four days out the week. And then every other day I lift weights. I think it, I think it helps. It helps me get that little bit of balance. Yeah, it's just, it's a hard thing for me to think about, but also this, you know, lifestyle is really new to me, uh, just what I'm going through. So I got to kind of get acclimated to that and then you know, yeah. It'll yeah. everything and everything in due time. I think there's gonna be a a way for me to to get uh, used to it, and uh, I want to do all that stuff. And I think if I have those goals in mind, where it's like, okay, working out is gonna help me with my tennis game, my racquetball, or swimming. Uh, you know, if I have that mindset. I think I could go pretty far. Yeah, yeah. Got to make sure you're. Uh, you got to be goal oriented whenever you uh, 
do stuff like this because otherwise you're just going to be like tread water. Yeah. No. Yeah, you yeah. can't just do it like blindly. It's like there has to be some sort of end result you want to reach. But I yeah, think that's, we... that's like life in general, so. Yeah. And uh, you got to make sure the journey is important, you know. Lifting weights might be good for me, but it's not good for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta... I'll find a way. I'll find a way. <laughs> I always got to do what works for you, y'all. I need to go in the charger and then go ahead and switch over the game. -oo. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, this music, though. This Metroid music. Metroid. Oh, it is Metroid really music. Big. <laughs> yeah, I like this yeah. music. This is, I think this is probably my favorite track on the Prime soundtrack. I mean, I don't really know too many tracks off the Metroid soundtrack, because they're mostly just like ambient but hearing it like on its own when it's not in the game like this shit is uh is de-stressing me right now <laughs> a good thing we'll let it play out for another minute spike. a plus b spike that's that's i think that's he's referencing mario tennis <laughs> So, you know it's another good game mm. to one I've been playing recently. In addition to Tetris, it's a Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. Well, fun. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a four-player game, I think. And I think you can do that on uh, the Switch now with the Game Boy Advance app. which Is, is it a four-player game? Yeah, you can connect, like, four... People's link cable. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> but then again, yeah, I'm you gotta kind find of a, yourself a party now. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a Kirby beginner. It's been fun getting to know all the uh, the ins and outs of the game because oh. I've only ever played what was that one on the 3DS? Planet Robobot. I uh, think it was called. Yeah, there's Planet Robobot. There's also Triple Deluxe, which I have. Yeah, it was definitely the first one then, because of Triple Deluxe. I hadn't, uh, ooh, <laughs> I had never heard of. But yeah, I played that one, and I was like, yeah, it's all right. And then I got this one in, like, a bundle, like, years ago, and I slapped it in the, uh, the Game Boy Macro that I recently salvaged from a broken DS Lite. And it's been good. I'm actually enjoying it a lot. I can see the appeal. Good, good. <laughs> starting to sound like the uh, the count from Sesame Street. That's true. What a beautiful logo. 